Welcome to Picture Book Chat, where we feature a handful of new picture books each month and discuss what makes them great. Whether you're a parent, caregiver, or teacher, you're bound to find some wonderful reading suggestions from librarians Mary Ellen Brax and Sherry Boggs. Hi, welcome to Picture Book Chat. I'm Mary Ellen Brax, Public Services Manager for Early Learning, and with me today is Sherry Boggs. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Mary Ellen. I'm the Youth Collection Development Librarian for the Spokane County Library District. And we love to talk books. Yes, we do. And we have some new ones for you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this group. Okay, so, you want to start? Some of these are so new that they haven't even been processed yet. Right. <laughs> like I grabbed them right off the new you know, incoming bookshelf to talk about them. So, the, so which means you can mm -hmm. put them on hold. That's right. And to look <laughs> I'm glad you for remembered. the... Um, <laughs> the QR code. <laughs> That's it. QR, QR code. code. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so, yes. So look for the QR code, mm -hmm. and then we can you can put them on hold once they become available, which yeah. wouldn't be too long. Exactly. So the first one I want to talk about today is Big by Vashti Harrison, and this is one I'm seeing a lot of buzz about and. When it came in, I it took my breath away. Like as you know, Mary Ellen, I had to come over. <laughs> like, yes. You've yes. got to look at this book. We've got to do it for picture book chat. But what I love about this book, it's about this little girl who everything is great about being big when she's little. Like she's got her little jumper that says "Dream Big." Um, it starts out once there was a girl with a big laugh and a big heart and very big dreams, and so being big is good. And she grows. And then all of a sudden, being big isn't so good. You know, you've got Santa here saying, you're a big girl, aren't you? And she gets stuck in the swing. And, like, these illustrations are just they're so, they're gorgeous and poignant. Mm -hmm. And I just love, like, the soft colors around her. Like, you can really feel for this character. Um, you've got a teacher saying, don't you think you're too big for that? Like, the sizeism mm -hmm. that we have, like, especially in our culture, like it's just so ingrained and you see how this girl is having to cope with this in her daily environment um, and how it actually conversely makes her feel small. It makes her feel like she doesn't belong or she's less than other people. Um, here it says the words stung and were hard to shake off. So she's starting to internalize these experiences. Um, she began to feel not herself, out of place, exposed. People have helpful things like wear dark colors. I, that's like a classic thing that mm -hmm. people say like, oh, right. just, you know, minimize yourself mm -hmm. by wearing dark things. Um, they try to make her be part of the background by being a mountain. And I love these panels here because what starts to happen is she starts to kind of retreat into her bigness. And like these, they're wordless panels. Um, I just love how gorgeous this art is, like the softness of it, but it's also super powerful. And the expressions on her face are really powerful. Right? Yeah, I just like, look at, mm -hmm. I, just, I want to hug this character in this book. And I love how the illustrator uses the constraints of the page to kind of mm -hmm. show her feeling hemmed in mm -hmm. by society and how they use this double page spread. And like, I just love how soft they make her skin look. Here she is struggling. You know, have you tried being smaller? Why can't you just fit in? Um, so it's really, it's <laughs> like it can feel like this is a very sad and heavy book, but what starts to happen is she starts to find power in her bigness. And she finds a way out. And I just, oh my gosh, like I get goosebumps every time I turn out this spread, like just this wonderful pink glow mm -hmm. of hope and how she's going to, decide for herself you know how to be in the world and she's giving these people their words back and saying these are yours they hurt me um and they're saying like you're too sensitive and she's like no i'm fine the way that i am and what i love about this is there's no adults rescuing her mm -hmm. or scolding the yeah. other children like i love that she saves herself mm -hmm. um and that she decides mm -hmm. i'm fine the way that i am so i just i think that this is such a powerful book mm -hmm. um 
you know, about any kind of othering, but especially, obviously, sizeism mm-hmm. and what that does, you know, especially to young girls. Yes. Yes, I love the empowerment at the end, that it's but that empowerment is done by yourself. It's all internal. Mm-hmm. And so how she comes out with that. So I think it would be a really good one to use with specific children, maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd necessarily read it with a to a group or in a classroom. Yeah. Um, but I think it does, it's a great one to read. If you were reading in a family, just I think it's a yeah. good book to read um, that maybe it might help promote some empathy. Yes. Um, for other kiddos. Um, so maybe if there was a situation going on in school, possibly, mm-hmm. but I think you'd have to know your classroom exactly and how, how it would go over, and and not make it seem for the child that maybe that's in the classroom. That's why I think it's kind of better to use it yes. on its own. Um, so, um, but yeah, it just um, yeah, very poignant, and I think it's um, very good for our culture, the way we are right now about size being so important. Yeah. Um, so um, this would be a great one to use. And yeah, I, yeah, and just like looking at it while we've been talking, I just like I love the girly col- colors of it, mm-hmm. like that she's reclaiming her femininity mm-hmm. too. Um, and I agree with you. I think when it comes to you know bullying or like othering people, like how you handle it as the adult is super important, mm-hmm. and making the kids feel school that isn't going to do yeah. it. Like mm-hmm. it. Like discovering this book on your own and having it spark mm-hmm. some empathy Right. Um, if you're the one othering somebody else mm-hmm. or if you're the kid that's feeling mm-hmm. pushed out, like feeling right. understood, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. seeing this little girl find her way out of this situation, mm-hmm. I think is just super mm-hmm. powerful. Yes. So I love this one. I can't say enough about how much I love it. I want it to win the Caldecott next year. I'm just like, these illustrations blow me away. Yeah, they are absolutely gorgeous. And and just like I said, with the expressions on her face, you really get how she's feeling. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how the kids read it and look at it and see it, um, too, to see if it comes across that way to children. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love, um, like, she's the author and illustrator in this book, and it's, sometimes with that, like, the, they can be a little stronger on one or the other, but I mm-hmm. think with both, it's just like, wow, this mm-hmm. is such a talent. And there is a nice author's note at the back of the book, too, Yeah, that's worth taking a look at and yeah. seeing just from her experience, um, too, Um I mean, she talks about the colors, you know, about wearing dark. She goes, I remember thinking I couldn't wear pink, that it was too bright a color. Yeah. And might make me stand out. Um, So, you know, um, she talks about developing insecurities early on. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is, this I think could be very helpful to a lot of children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another way to push back. She did a beautiful job on the book. Yeah. So that is mm-hmm. Big by Vashti Harrison. Yes. What do we have next, Mary Ellen? We have ten oh, yeah. cats. <laughs> so this goes to a very different um, mood here. Yes. Um, so this is all about ten cats by <laughs> Emily Gravitt. This is a, you know, the end papers kind of show you, even though it says 10 cats, you've got all these colors here. So you could introduce the book by talking about the colors on the page. I love the foreshadowing, too. It's yes. like, oh, what could happen? <laughs> Cans of paint? I don't yes, know. Yes, they even have a cat on the page um, opposite the title page. Um, and then there's little cats, little kittens peeking into the cat tin so it's great for counting it's great for early math Mm -hmm. and so the cats go through and they talk about the colors of the cats and they go one cat two black cats and you see them they're pushing over all the paint cans (laughs) three cats with stripes so you can talk about patterns with this too Mm -hmm. then you see somebody opening up the paint (laughs) and then you see patches um and then pretty soon, you see all the paint all around <laughs> here. So there's lots you can do with this 
book too because you could point out it'd be great to read i think in story time mm -hmm. but you could also really use it one-on-one -on -one and point out okay there's six cats with yellow dots let's find them all and count them on the page um and then seven cats with blue blotches and then we get into some color mixing yes it's very color. exciting yes um and then, I mean, the colors in here are just so bright and brilliant, too, so they really stand out. And then <laughs> 10 multicolored cats. And I love the look on the mama cat's face. And then <laughs> it's bath time. <laughs> and so more splashes on the back. But, yes, this is, I think, a great one for using with counting and patterns mm -hmm. and colors. Um, I think it'll be a story time favorite, I think. Great for preschool. I was just going to ask about age. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think preschool is good. You could probably read it to toddlers. It'll just be on a very different level. Whereas mm -hmm. you can kind of read through it with the toddlers. Um, for your older toddlers, it would be a good one one-on-one -on -one, because then you could start to point things out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's perfect for preschool because you could do a lot of, you know, talking in a group about this. So whether mm -hmm. it's story time or in circle time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a big hit. So, yeah, really cute. Um, really just a fun story to use with kids where you got numbers and colors. And yeah, I I like how she um, builds up the suspense mm -hmm. by showing those cans of paint right away and, like, how the cats are interacting with them. Like, mm -hmm. you're just waiting for the mayhem yeah, to something's begin. Gonna happen. Yeah, and I also love how um, you kind of have to hunt for the cats when she starts talking about patterns. Like, yes. I like that when she talks about the striped cats or the ones with um, it starts splotches. Off like, you're kind of like, okay, well, there's two, and then you have to yeah. look for the third one. And then it gets more difficult to yeah. find them as you go on. So I do like that. So it's kind of like you're, you're practicing and you're training the eye to look for certain things, mm -hmm. and then once it gets more crowded, then you're... Yeah. And it will take a little bit more hunting <laughs> to find it. But yes. Yeah, it's this is a great one. I yeah. this is one that um, you know, like it seems simple on the surface, but there's a lot that it's doing. Like yes. you're talking about there's the counting, mm -hmm. there's the colors, there's the patterns, there's mm -hmm. you know, developing that kind of seek and find yeah. ability with your eyes. It's and, a good one. I love yeah. it. And it's so true <laughs> with cats. You have to be careful when you're painting because if they walk through, there's, there's little paw prints all over your Everywhere. house. <laughs> good times. So, yes, again, that was 10 Cats by Emily Gravett. And if you would like to put a hold on this, just scan the QR code and you'll be able to do that. Yeah. Be first in line. Yes. Now yeah. we've got some... Um, some alphabet yes. fun. And this is A is for axolotl, which is so fun to say. Um, I love any book that has an axolotl on the cover. And this one is particularly cute. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've got a nonfiction one that's, it actually even looks similar to this that would be fun to pair with this. Yeah. Um, but this is an unusual animal ABC. And so you're going to be meeting all sorts of creatures that you might not have seen before. So we start with our little axolotl friend who dives and dips and swims. They breathe underwater and can replace missing limbs. So right away you've got like a rhyming scheme mm -hmm. that carries throughout the book. Um, this is a binturong who apparently smells of buttered popcorn. I love that it pulls in the <laughs> senses. <laughs> Probably not a great thing to have around predators. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I love that there's there's a range of things. Like you meet creatures, like there's nocturnal ones, there's daytime mm -hmm. ones, there's ones that live in trees, ones that live in the oceans. So there's a great range. Right. This is a little Dumbo octopus. It's super cute. The colors in the book are just amazing. So yeah. They're really bright and um, I think it has a lot of visual appeal. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. And I like the high contrast mm -hmm. with the letters, I mm -hmm. think, for kids learning yes. their letters. That's mm -hmm. a good thing to have. Um, and I like the simplicity of the illustrations. Like, it almost looks like cut paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I learned animals I didn't know. I would have thought this was an otter. It is not. It is a hyrax. Yeah. <laughs> it is a cousin to elephants and manatees. Yes. Who would have thought? 
yes. Um, yeah, lots of names. And I. the only thing I wish is I noticed on the front cover they have the pronunciation on it. Yeah. This. I wish they had continued to do that throughout the book because although they have a glossary at the end, yeah. they don't have the pronunciation there. So I would have to look them all up and then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some them. you could guess that, but yeah. others, I there's just no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, so it is nice that at the back here they do have a meet the animals and tell you a little <laughs> bit more about it um, but the one thing we you noticed right Sherry was yeah. that some of them they talk they have a question or they don't answer it back here yeah like the um, in the V there's like this little the vec vec <laughs> don't know if I can say it, Vaquita, Vaquita. Um, and it says that there's about 10 left in the sea. They're the smallest type of porpoise and the rarest you can see. So for me immediately, like I'm a huge whale and dolphin fan. And if I'm a little kid whale and dolphin fan, mm -hmm. I want to know like how small are, are they? they? Um, and so they don't say on the page. And so I go back here to look and they still don't say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says they're the rarest marine mammals. Um, they're small cetaceans. They live in the shallow seas of North America namely in the northern Gulf of California, it's estimated that there are fewer than 10 left in the wild, which they kind of already said. So mm -hmm. um, so this book isn't going to give you all your answers, but you had an idea yeah, about how I, you could. I mean, but what you could do with this, because I think this is for older kids. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 26 pages, so we always keep that in mind with an <laughs> alphabet book in right. the group that you're reading to. But if you were reading it for, like, first grade, second grade, um, you could actually, even third grade, you could um, work in a research project to find out more about the animals. Yeah. So that could answer the questions and use it as a jumping off point for an unusual animal theme. And I yeah. think that would work really Maybe well. Maybe everyone could pick one and do a report or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's gorgeous. Um, so that was the only thing really that caught our eye about yeah. it was just the pronunciation and then having a few more details. I mean, there's yeah. a limited amount of space. So. Definitely, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it's foremost an alphabet book, not, right. um, you know, an animal encyclopedia. Right. <laughs> but it would spur some interest in some of these, so that's when yeah. the research part could come into it. So I'd never heard of the Yeti crab. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was a really fun one. To possibly use, um, yeah. If you did it, it would probably work better with older preschoolers. Like you're mm -hmm. talking your older fours and fives, and then definitely that K through three. I think it would it yeah. would work well with, especially if you've got an animal lover. Yeah. Would you try this in a story time? Um, I don't know if I would or not. It's a little long. Yeah. But maybe. Um, I think you'd have to get all the pronunciations down. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, if any of the kids Practice. know that animal, they'll correct us right away. It's yeah, like right in front of people. Names. Always fun. Um, so, but yeah, if I had an, uh, an older preschool group I, and, they, and I knew they loved animals, I would use it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it is knowing your group. Yeah. And, you know, could they really sit for that long of a story? Yeah. Um, and there's some, I mean, and we know it just with different kids, it's different. But, you know, you could have the three-year-old who would be mesmerized by this. And, yeah. And then maybe one of your older kids, maybe it wouldn't um, resonate so much with them and they wouldn't sit for it. So, yeah. Yeah, just knowing your group. Mm -hmm. Definitely. A beautiful book. It was fun. To yeah. learn about some new animals I hadn't heard of. So, um, and I like the map up at the front yeah. too. Seeing <laughs> See where everybody lives. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. I, I think for an alphabet book, mm -hmm. it's a fun approach. Like, yes. I haven't really seen something mm -hmm. like this before. And like you said, the letter really stands out. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that too. So, yeah. Great. So, nice, nice one. That is A is for Axolotl, and you can scan your QR code and get that for your very own yes <laughs> great yes. what's next uh, next we have a board book a new board book super cute um how do you take a bath by kate mcmullen um so again another animal book that would be good to use with younger kids it's all about taking a bath <laughs> so cute yeah the illustrations are adorable 
And so they talk about a cat has a rough pink tongue to lick his smooth brown fur. Polar bear scrubs her face with snow burr. And so it goes on with all the different animals here. Um, it is a little bit of a longer book. Um, it, so when you're talking about using it with babies and young toddlers, it may not work as well because of the length of the sentences and how yeah. many words are on the page. Um, I think the illustrations oh, would be um, very eye-catching to toddlers. Mm -hmm. So, um, and with a smaller format, you would read this with just, you know, a couple of children anyway. And, of course, you could have your toddlers that will sit there and just be enthralled, and you can read the whole thing. But this is one of those books, if you have younger toddlers, you could just point out the pictures, and then as they get older, then go back and read it with them. Yeah. Um, so you can do some counting on the pages, too. Here's some honeybees. How many honeybees do you see? Let's count them. How many chicks are there? Um, so, and then they talk about how do you take a bath? And there's some questions they can answer. Do fish nibble on you? Yum. And the kids <laughs> are probably going, no. Do you spit upon your thumb? No. no. Are your hair and <laughs> legs your brush? No. no. Do you thrash about in dust? No. So we've got some rhyming in there too, which yeah. is fun to see. Um, so... Yeah, so, you know, preschoolers would enjoy this, I think, <laughs> even, too. So, just kind of a, in the, of course, the color scheme in here is really <sighs> It's beautiful, yeah. Too. Seems spring. It's shot spring to me. Yeah. Um, and really cute characters there. So, yeah, I thought it was, yeah, a really fun one to use. But just be aware, you know, not all board books are meant for... <laughs> toddlers and babies yeah. um, sometimes they take a um, if this was in a larger format it would be really fun to use in story time and so but sometimes they take those picture books that are meant for preschoolers and then um, put them down into a board book and that's what happened with this one because mm -hmm. when I was looking through it I was like man this would have made a, <laughs> a great picture book and it turns out it is a picture book mm -hmm. and we have it in our collection mm -hmm. I just completely forgot. I think I ordered that, like, in the COVID times. Yeah. <laughs> and anything I ordered during the COVID times, I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have kind of a shaky memory on. Um, right. So this is in a larger format, as well as there's another book called How Do You Go to Sleep yes. that we have as mm -hmm. well. Um, so if you wanted to use that yeah. with older kids or more of a group, you'd mm -hmm. be able to do that. Right. Um, yeah, there was something I was thinking about this as you were going through it. I think this interactive element mm -hmm. I really like, yes. like asking, you know, the the reader, the right. kids, you know, well, how do you take a bath compared to how these animals do? And with a longer book, that's really good, a really good way to engage kids, too, mm -hmm. is to have that yeah, uh, back, back and, and forth. forth conversation with them or answering some questions. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So That's a good one. Of, yeah, very fun one. So again, that's How Do You Take a Bath by Kate McMullen, and the illustrator is Sydney Hansen. So, yeah. yeah, some good fun ones today, Sherry. Yeah, I like this group. Yes. So, well, that brings us to the end of Picture Book Chat. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.